you know it. Even on it. Yeah, no, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know that he was supposed to be gone. But you know. That's for the camera. Great. So, uh, welcome everyone uh, to the uh, December 11th, uh, 2018, uh, 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 Columbia City of Columbia Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, my name is Chuck Sally, and I serve as chair of the board, and I'd like to introduce the board to my far left it's Reggie McKnight my immediate left is um, Gene Dinkins and then to my immediate right is Marcellus Primus and then um, to my far right is Jenna Stevens um, I'd also like to introduce the staff that will be assisting um, on the at the desk next to the podium it's Rachel Bailey the zoning administrator and Hope Hasty the deputy zoning administrator um, also assisting today are Andrea Wolf, the Land Use Board Coordinator, and Erica Hyen, uh, the uh, Zoning uh, Planning Coordinator. Um, this board is charged with hearing applications for special exceptions, variances, and administrative appeals. All testimony is recorded for the record. Anyone wishing to speak will need to be sworn in and come to the podium to speak. No testimony may be taken from the floor. When you come to the podium, please state your name and please speak clearly into the microphone. Applicants with cases before the board are allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes. This time also includes all persons um, uh, presenting information on behalf of the applicant. This time limit does not include any questions asked by the board or staff regarding the case. Any member of the public may address the board in intervals of three minutes or five minutes if by spokesperson for an established body or group of three or more people. The applicant then has five minutes for rebuttal. The board reserves the right to amend these limits on a case-by-case -case basis. For those of you who plan to speak, you must be sworn. So at this time, if you plan to speak as an applicant or um, a, a for or against any application, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you affirm or attest that the testimony you will give today is the truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. At this time, I'd like to uh, turn the meeting over to Ms. Bailey. Good morning. There were a few cases that were deferred or withdrawn prior to today, so I just want to clarify those. Item number seven on the agenda, 2018-0112 for 121 Shop Road Extension, that has been administratively deferred. Item number 11, 2018-0110. Um, for 1112 Hardin Street, that was withdrawn. And item number 12, 2018-0111 for 3038 Bronx Road, that has been deferred until the January meeting. We will begin with a consent agenda today. The board uses the consent agenda to approve non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion and vote. If a member of the board or the general public wishes to discuss an item on the consent agenda, that item is removed and considered during the meeting. The board then approves the remaining consent agenda items with one motion and vote. On the consent agenda today, we have the approval of the November 13th, 2018 minutes. Item number two, case 2018-0099 for 3401 Faro Road. This is a special exception to permit a daycare. Item number three, case 2018-0104 for 2238 Sumter Street. This is a special exception to permit a print shop. Item number four, case 2018-0105 for 2323 Harrison Road. This is a special exception to establish a general farm, primarily crop use. Item number five, case 2018-0108 for 4121 Palmetto Avenue. This is a variance to fence height, fence height requirements. Item number six, case 2018-0109 for 315 South Maple Street. This is a variance to fence height requirements. Item number eight, Case 2018-0116 for 1101 and 1105 Pine Street and 2123 and 2125 Senate Street. 
This is a special exception to expand a religious organization. Item number nine, case 2018-0118. This is for LaBruce Lane. The TMS on this one, as it does not have an assigned street address, is 13807. 0314, and this is a variance to setback requirements to construct a single family residence. So that is everything on the consent agenda. If a member of the public or the board wishes to discuss a case, please let us know now. Uh, for the sake of uh, clarity, we are getting ready to vote on all of the items that um, Ms. Bailey just uh, uh, announced. If anyone is here, We'd like to remove those from the consent agenda and put them on the regular agenda where you'll have a chance to speak for or against those items. Raise your hand now or forever hold your peace. I see no one um, and I will accept a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda subject to any staff comments. Second. second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Oh, and if anyone was on the consent agenda and they wish to leave, they are welcome to. You're welcome to stay too, but. <laughs> we'll give them a minute. <laughs> All right, we will continue with the regular agenda. The first item is case number 13, 2018-0113 for 1700 Wayne Street. This is a variance to setback requirements for an accessory structure. If the applicant is present, they are welcome to come forward. Good morning, how are you? Fine, thank you. I am Laddie Howard, the owner of 1700 Wayne Street. Uh, this morning we are talking about a gazebo uh, that I've constructed there. Um, just a little bit of, I'm getting feedback, so this sounds funny to me. It does sound a little funny. Is it, I can, I distant, don't, I don't maybe if the maybe distance from the, um, you go, I can, but I wonder if it's being recorded, so it has to be, uh, yeah, there you go. You've got a, you've got, your voice carries very well. Yeah, it does. And it, it's give it, in my ear, it's like, I feel like, <laughs> I, I say a word and I want to stop. I want to take a break. Okay, I'll try and be, uh, deal with it. So, a uh, little history. Um, we purchased the property in 2002. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, Wayne, with the Arsenal Hill area, um, but it's one of the oldest areas in, in Columbia. I'm not trying to give you a history lesson, but... Uh, what's important for me to articulate to you is that when we when we were uh, when we purchased the property in 2002, the character of the neighborhood was completely different than what we have now. Uh, of those residents, there are probably three original residents left: uh, Ms. Bradshaw, Mr. Richardson, and Ms. Davis. And we were the first to come in uh, during that during that time and construct new residents a new residence there outside of Governor's Hill. So there was a, a very active component there. I'm telling you that to tell you that I care about the neighborhood and the history of it and, and everything that we've done there a whole lot. Everything that has been developed there has kind of come after we came in and invested at 1700 Wayne Street. Uh, when we did that, we purchased that property from the Development Corporation to revitalize the area. And so when we purchased that property, we did so with variances already in place. That property, as most of the properties there uh, don't really meet the zoning, the uh, zoning codes. Uh, that my particular property has a house and a ten, roughly a nine point nine seven nine foot seven inch fence there, that is right on the property line. That the, the wall of that house and the wall of that fence 
is actually my property line. So when we purchased that property, we purchased it, purchased it with an easement so that the, the occupants or the owners of that would have an egress, an um, ingress and egress to that fence in the back. Um, I think you can see that here. We're on the Wayne Street side there. That driveway, all of that is actually right on the property line. So there is an existing variance in most of the neighborhood with most of the structures. All of the properties there, uh, they're, the lots next to me, there are three lots. They're about 45 feet wide. Uh, they're not really the standard size lots. Our lot is not a standard size lot. We built it back about 16 years ago. We, we had to dig out and go down about five feet when we built that house. So all of it and most of the neighborhood is just kind of an, kind of an exception in, in that there are not really a whole lot of um, ways that you can really observe that setback. In this particular instance, when we built the gazebo, a uh, couple of things. The neighborhood, as you see, doesn't have a whole lot of tree structure, a whole lot of coverage there except for a couple of trees that I've planted. So when we are trying to enjoy or do things there at the property, uh, we get a direct sun in. And so it's kind of hard to go back in the back, especially in the heat of summer and do anything. Plus, there is a tree that is on the property right next to us. And that tree is it's kind of tall and overgrown. And I can't, I'm pretty good with plants, but I cannot think of the name of this one. It has those little purple, little green berries that fall over, all over the place. So it comes over, and there is that residue from the tree that comes over into the yard. So we built the gazebo uh, to enjoy, to continue to enhance and enjoy the property, but to also kind of keep some of that out uh, so that when we do things that we're doing there, uh, when, I, when we did this particular structure, uh, and it's not completed because we got this right before we had to leave the country for a time. Uh, we were doing it because we had an event that was going on and we have, because our yard is dug out, we don't have any other space, we put a guitar player up there for our event. It's pretty nice. Um, but in order for us to continue to enjoy the property and do things like that, we have to do it. Now the setback from the wall is set it back to have this enforced to sit this back from the wall. It kind of pushed us right where we had to dig out that property, and we really don't have the traversing space that we need to move around. And I have a pomegranate tree right there that I planted, and I'm, I'm kind of in the plants. My whole property is based on scent. Um, I was trying to stay away from that pomegranate tree as well, so when we put that there, and stay away from the fence uh, that the neighbor needs to get in and out of there. So I would ask for a variance here, and that's just kind of a background of, of what has gone into this property as we've um, as we constructed it and, and enjoyed it. Uh, this is an open structure. Uh, this is not something now, when I, when I decided to build a fence, when I purchased this from Fred Delk at the um, Development Corporation, we purchased it with a full uh, knowledge and ability to be able to build any fencing or anything that we, could, that we wanted to build as long as we allowed that easement in and out of that back fence there. So to enforce this zoning code here, um, I'm not sure that it would really further the interests of, of anyone here uh, because it's still an open structure. Uh, we can still go in and build that fence uh, that allows us to keep, we have a lot, of, a lot of traffic in the neighborhood because of Finley Park. So one of the issues that I have that I'm planning to deal with in this gazebo as part of it is that sometimes I'm in my backyard uh, outside of my workshop and I have people that I don't know walk right through there which is private property and come out the back and go into the woods there. And so we're having a little issue uh, constantly maintaining and dealing with that. So this is all in an attempt to continue to develop, continue to enhance and develop the property and to, to enforce the zoning code at this point, what I think ignore the existing variance that is there with that wall and that fence and not really, it's not going to really protect the ingress and egress from the property because it's an open structure and there's full, any, any access that the city would need is still, still there. So I would ask for this consideration um, just because we, we really are sitting on property lines that are not the same as they are in any other area of the city. If you look at the new development in our area that has all come since we did this, um, there are, there are new neighborhoods and new developments there 
which with I think zero lot lines. I think that's the proper term. Um, all of the most of the new construction there. And there is property, a, a development here, uh, development up the street, battery, all of those have different setbacks than what is generally in the code, I believe. So uh, I'll take any questions. Um, uh, thank you so much. Now, you mentioned an easement. Is, there, is, a, is this structure on an easement, an existing easement? No, no, no. The structure is, if you pull up that, can you pull up that picture again? Okay, so the easement, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you see the cutout, there, there's the wall of the house there. You see where the house ends, and then you see where the fence is right there. That is a gate for the property right next, next door. Between you see that? Between the fence and the house. Between the fence yeah. and the house. That, yeah. You can't, you can't really see it. There's a flower pot. If you look down, you'll see a flower pot on the ground there. Yeah. Right okay. next to the wall. So yeah. that little cutout, you see that little cutout right there? That's actually a gate that the, the property next door needs to be able to get in and out of their backyard. Street. The easement, I'm sorry. The easement is actually right there on the wall. It's right there along this, this fence of the, the wall of the house. Do they park where it looks like there's a No, they, the property is all owned by, by me, but the, there's a parking pad there that, the, that anyone can use, and of course they can use um, at that particular property. No one uses it because the, the incline is really too steep. Um, it has been used in the past, but when I have pulled up, I have a kind of big car, it, it will scrape your car. So no one really uses that, but it is, it is there. It's more, I think that easement is there more for us to walk, or for them to walk in and out than to actually park. To actually park. But, you, but the easement does cover them to be able to park there as well. And that, once again, that's because the walls of that house and that fence are actually on the property line. I'm having a hard time really visualizing this. It looks like that the, the photos that we have are like there's a, there's a house there that's not shown on the, on the actual photo. Is that right? That, that's the house right there that we're <coughs> talking about. If you go back to that, that previous, right there. So that's, the, that's not my house. That is the house that's actually, the, the walls of the house are actually on my property line. So that's, that's, my, that's all of my yard space there. But that's the, that's the wall of the, of the adjacent property and the adjacent fence. Okay. So that fence, as far as maintaining that, the outside of that fence, I can maintain the outside of that fence or keep it clean, do whatever, put a structure against it. Um, that's all on the property line. My house is right here. The, the brick house. The, brick, the, brick, the red brick, the brick house. Red, okay. Mm -hmm. the but this brick picture house? Is, is, the picture is showing this house because that's, that's the yard and the that's the property. The two-story house next door to that. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So the easement, just to clarify again, the easement because this is our property, this, ho this house right here needs to be able to get in and out of that backyard, um, carry trash out to the street, pull the trash <laughs> out from the backyard, do all those things. On the other side of this house, which is not shown, is the exact same situation, I believe. There is no, that, that property has, sits on two property lines. I'm not gonna speak too much to the other side because I'm not exactly sure as to whether or not there's any, any setback. But the property line is is very narrow there as well. I I I just I think we'll, uh, we'll let's come back to that. But first of all, um, <laughs> let's see what uh, if there's anyone else here um, that wants to speak for this or against this. My name is Cliff Spann. I'm the owner of 1708 Wayne Street, which is adjacent to the 1700 Wayne Street location. For clarity, is that the is that the, the gray um, brick painted brick building? Yes, sir. One story brick building adjacent to one, that we're seeing in the photograph. Yes, sir. With the uh, tin roof. Okay. But I'm requesting that the board deny 
the request of variance for not meeting all the criteria for a variance as stated in the uh, municipal code. And I broke this out into a number of things. Like Laddie, we also moved into this area of Arsenal Hill back in 2003 for the purposes of not only uh, help building back to Columbia, but also revitalizing this neighborhood. And I would agree with Laddie. It is amazing to see what has truly happened and transpired within this neighborhood. And I enjoyed serving as a neighborhood president for about 14 years uh, in the neighborhood. But as we talk about this, Mr. Howard states in his application that, it is, that the lot is narrow and enforcement of the code would prevent an open structure that is necessary for shade and usefulness of the narrow outdoor space and would force him deeper into the lot which would crowd the flow of the gazebo. However, the resulting size and shape of the side yard must have been considered when the home was being planned. The flow around the gazebo is mostly crowded, due in part as you can see that one of the four sides is attached to the existing 1708 Wayne Street wall. Mr. Howard is also limited by not placing items permanent or temporary that could impede the ingress and egress pathway of the 1700 or the 1708 back gate. I did provide in the back of that the easement because I know that came up as a question. So there you'll be able to see and there's also a picture on the front page that shows the actual gate going into the center block wall which contains an open uh, courtyard behind this 840 square foot <laughs> dwelling that was uh, constructed prior to 1900. But as we all talk about, these conditions do not generally apply to the other properties in the vicinity. That's part of the uh, criteria. However, many people living in Arsenal Hill and many of the downtown communities have narrow side backyards and oftentimes their homes were constructed on the zero lot lines. And all parties still must comply with the city or the city codes regarding setback rules. And we've run into that with a number of the neighbors and I petitioned on behalf of a few neighbors that were trying to go against the variance which were, which were not successful. Because of these conditions, the application of the division of this particular piece of property would effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the utilization of the property. We would disagree. Mr. Howard has every right to use and enjoy his property. This is his property. However, I do not believe that Mr. Howard's application for an additional <laughs> recreation structure to be located on the property line proves an unnecessary hardship. Denying the setback variance for the structure does prohibit Mr. Howard's use and enjoyment of his side yard, nor does it prohibit him from building an approved structure that fits the property on his, uh, fits properly on his uh, property. In addition, Mr. Howard references the need for shade in his application. However, the area of the property is, is in the northeastern corner. It's written in the uh, minutes that it was the northwestern. <coughs> it's partially fully shaded throughout much of the day. But this is what I really wanted to focus in on is item number four. The authorization of variance will not be substantial detriment to adjacent property or to the public good. And I've listed out five different reasons as to why it would hinder and be a detriment to the overall good of the neighborhood characteristics. And last but not least, because I don't want to read everything in the, in the, uh, for the allotment of time, but I did want to point this out. Lastly, Mr. Howard submitted the board an application in which he had to affirm and attest the seven statements. The last statement in the applicant, applic uh, applicant has to attest that the property is not restricted by any recorded covenant that would prohibit the requested activity. Mr. Howard was fully aware of the recorded easement created by the previous owner of 1700, as well as Fred Delk of the Columbia Development Cor Corporation, and we both agreed, or the previous uh, owners agreed, for ingress, egress, and vehicular parking. And that is our desired intent for this, is to actually have a parking pad within the confines of the easement stated. But again, thank you so much for the time in which to uh, discuss this matter and appreciate it. So where service. would the, the parking be? How, does that, how do you access that for the parking? How do you access? Is it like where the gazebo is? Right in front of the gazebo. So if you take a look at the actual easement, you have 20 feet from the sidewalk, and then it stair steps back to the actual back of the property. So if you take a look at the easement, and I've blown it up. Oh, I did not blow that one up. So this would be... So you come in from the sidewalk from, from the west, you will head in 20 feet, and then you will go inside. 
a total of 5.8 feet, and then you will go east another 6 feet, and then you will go in another 5 feet. So it's stair steps, but that's indicated, or it's, uh, the easement was originally constructed for a parking pad beside the home. And as, as I read this um, sketch here on the front page, I see the structure is lying um, outside <coughs> of the access easement. It is outside the access of the gate. Is that what yeah, you're? I, no, I, I, the, way I, the way I interpret it, and this is a little small picture, but I see the proposed structure or existing structure as not being located within the access easement at all. Oh, it's outside of the access. Okay. Oh, I, well, I thought one so. of your points was regarding uh, point seven that Mr. Howard attested that the subject property is not restricted by recorded covenant, and, and, et cetera. Uh, there was an existing easement. That again, it pretty much stated that anything regarding that wall, the only thing that could be built would be a fence or a post. That's it. There is no concrete pad that would be allotted because the actual concrete pad of which the uh, uh, structure is built is actually attaching to the wall. So as you take a look at the actual easement, it'll state. Is that, is that in this package that you submitted? Yes, sir. It's on page two of the actual easement that was recorded. On item number four, the grantee or future grantees of the RV, which is River Vista property, shall have the right but not the obligation to construct a fence or wall immediately adjacent to, but not on in the easement area, which fence or wall may be connected to the Patrick Weir wall. That was the previous owner of 1708. <coughs> so you could build a fence or a wall. Maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but <coughs> I, don't, I don't understand your point because I see the proposed structure being outside of the easement area. It is outside area. the easement area. What we're saying is, is per the actual statement was, there was, no, there was no type of easements that would preclude him from building there. What we're stating is that it was defined that only a fence or a wall could be built there and that both owners are responsible for that rear wall in terms of painting and, maintain and maintenance of it. But I'm not contesting that, I mean, that is, that is within his property description, that property, and the structure is not being built within the actual confines of the easement. The picture that was represented, I think, really does do service because it does look like it actually belongs to me. And that's how we were first brought aware of the, uh, of the building of the structure. We had a number of neighbors call us saying, what are you building? And so for us, for the hopeful use of a, providing a lease as well as selling this house, um, it could be, a, we see it as a huge detriment seeing the unsightly structure that was constructed. <coughs> quick, I did quick. provide one view of it from the roadbed where you can see from the roadbed of Wayne Street as well as the sidewalk. Quick question. Uh, I, I think you said that you were the neighborhood president, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, did, did you get the views, uh, the input from your fellow uh, neighborhood members? Oh, did well, we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, is their, what are their thoughts on it? Uh, two of the neighbors were very much against it. I do have one letter from one gentleman. Uh, I did speak with a few or two others. Uh, they didn't want to get embroiled within a neighbor, neighborly dispute, but they were not in favor of it. <coughs> okay, thank you. And I have made known to the uh, executive staff of the Arsenal Hill Neighborhood Association of not only the, the uh, proposed request, but also our response. So we've kept them informed. So this looks like it was it granted the easement, um, which you have sketched out on that on the front of the property, which may be fenced. 
I guess by either either party, so long as it doesn't encroach on the easement. Correct. And uh, can um, touch the wall. And it can attach to the wall. And attach to the wall, excuse yes, sir. me. Yes, Right. I just want to clarify for the record that this is a private easement between the private property owners. It does not override any zoning requirements. Um, it's something that you can consider, but it's not the ruling document here, the ordinances. And the um so the this building is actually on the line is that correct yes sir all the way from the where the house goes all the way through that where that concrete block wall is yes sir and the actual uh, rear wall is actually about three inches inside the property line which would be to mr howard's property line and so i believe that's what he was talking about about the existing variance is at that point in time all those houses many of them were built on zero lot lines built on the actual property line right so if we want to consider that as an existing variance or that's just the way in which it is mm -hmm. it is not an existing variance to clarify <laughs> as well um, many of the structures were built <laughs> before our current code were in place so yeah. they just predate our ordinance right. so that would uh, but it would be considered an encroachment I believe Okay. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Daddy, would you like to come back to the stadium? Is anybody else here to speak about this matter? Go ahead. I, I do want to clear up just a few things. Um, just some, I think, accuracy issues. Uh, one, Mr. Spann is not the existing president. He is the former president okay. <laughs> of the Neighborhood Association. He doesn't live in the neighborhood anymore. He's a, an investor in the neighborhood. Um, the, I think the first point, an inaccurate statement that was made, just in, I think Mr. Dinkins actually was asking the question. Okay, so the easement, which was not between me and Mr. Spann, it was between me purchasing the property, and it was there with the previous owner of that property, doesn't go past that fence, okay? The easement goes up to allow ingress and egress, egress to that fence. So that this pad in no way involves that easement at all. Uh, the construction of a fence on that property, once again, is not by either party. It's by me, the <coughs> owner of the property, um, that can then be maintained. But they can't come and build a fence across that property, which would then go into mine because that house is actually on the property line. So I'm the one that can build and maintain that fence. They can. As, as them having an easement, of course, they have the maintenance issues, but they, can't ha they don't have any building capability there. Um, the other thing is there was a statement. I, now, I'm, not, I'm completely unaware as a resident of the neighborhood who's been there uh, since 2002. Uh, I, I was not aware that there was any, uh, aside from the correspondence from the zoning, that there was any, anyone took an offense to the, to the structure. Uh, it was referred to as being unsightly. Um, I have to say that the structure is not unsightly. It is the beginning of a gazebo. We had an event, the time ran out, and I left the country for over a month. We got the notice right before I left the country. I didn't touch it again because I was not going to do any more building or completion of the structure after receiving correspondence from zoning. The tarp that's over the top of that is a temporary tarp because I told you we had a guitar player there. Um, the sun does beam down and beams down all through. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are, you're going to get sun exposure. So we have a temporary tarp there that we had to have for that evening. For the, we had to have for that evening. I did not remove it. I did not do anything else to finish out the structure because we, we received the letter from zoning. Complete, I, was, I was completely okay, surprised. Okay, uh, Mr. Howard, um, let's just go through the criteria that okay. um, you're required to meet um, real quickly just to... You've, you've kind of explained some of it, just so we'll have it for the record and be clear. So, the, um, describe the extraordinary exceptional conditions, such as the size, shape, topography, et cetera, that pertain to the subject property and why um, this uh, uh, variance is necessary. 
So we have a, because of the, um, the uh, size of the lot, we had to go up, okay? So, and when I say go up, I mean constructing the house. When we did that, we had to structurally dig out the lot because we actually built, we were the first construction here um, after 2000, I mean, recent construction there. Everything else came after we invested in this property. To get that structure there, um, we had to dig out about five feet. And so when we did that, that in this backyard, which is hard, you may be able to see it here, but between the gazebo now and that front yard, I mean the, the backyard, there's actually a five foot drop off that goes into the courtyard area. So staying back from that is, is actually a safety issue for us so that when you walk around there, you don't get too close to it. You need, if you're in a kitchen, in a kitchen or anything, you need at least 36 inches out there. Uh, moving around, you need a little bit more space so that you don't actually get into an area where you might fall five feet into that courtyard area. So that, that is one issue there. The other issue is there, we just don't, I mean, there, that's where the space is. That's the, our backyard is right there in that back corner. And as far as the enjoyment of that property and what is useful for us and the, the things that we, are, we have to do there, that is the only area that we could, we could put that structure block out the sun, be able to use that backyard, and not, not do anything that's going to interrupt the, the ingress and egress uh, according to our easement to that property that we're trying to protect there. The, uh, the parking pad, well, I'll wait, maybe, maybe you'll get to that. Yes, sir. Right, that's right there. Whatever direction that is. Right there, that's right. In that corner of the residential. Right, it's in that back corner. If you look at the white, it's in that back corner, which is all our property. And there's no attachment to the property. There's a pad on the ground, but the, the structure is completely independent of that wall. Uh, there was reference made to the, to the parking pad, and there's, there's actually an old parking pad there now that would be on... I've, I've thought about putting one there, but we would be the ones to construct that pad. Um, there is nothing to prevent, and as I said in my opening testimony, which I think was fairly accurate, there is uh, nothing there to stop parking in that area. This, this gazebo and everything is well beyond the easement area, and we have maintained that, and I've even, I haven't torn up what is there and built a better one there, um, but the parking pad, the original parking pad is still there. Okay. Beg your pardon, I was looking at something. So, so um, describe the conditions noted above that do generally do not apply to other property or structures in the vicinity. I'm sorry? Describe how the conditions noted above, meaning the extraordinary exceptional conditions such as size, topography, and all that are not the same as other um, or, or different from other um, uh, properties in the vicinity. Okay, so the property is roughly, and I, you have to forgive me. I don't. I, I didn't know there was any opposition to the to the um, gazebo. I'm, I'm really uh, so I didn't come with all of the the measurements and all that. But the property, I'll tell you that the home is sitting basically on a 45 by 66 foot lot, something like that. Uh, when, we, when we constructed that and went through the planning of that property, uh, we, we, we had to use pretty much, let me back up. The, the desire when we, were, when we went in with Fred Delk and the Development Corporation to invest in this area to spur development there was to do a structure that was going to be in keeping kind of architecturally with the area, but that would also show a significant investment and spur interest in the area. Um, I think we accomplished that pretty, pretty significantly because every other development, I mean, every other investment and development in that area has come prior to my wife and I bringing our young kids there and building that area. I was the one um, that had to deal with the heroin dealers and the prostitutes there. I, I was the one that did that. 
um, prior to all that. So we, we built a structure there that pushed us to the limit structurally so that our outside yard um, was very limited there. And we did that, one, to give us as much space because the lot is narrow, so we had to go up, but to also give us a structure there that would help, help spur interest and development there. You, would see, you see up the street is uh, Governor's Hill, and then right across from Governor's Hill is a neighbor that came soon after we built there. But that was the type of, kind of the type of structure and um, it was, it, we just wanted to show an investment in the area that would, that would spur other interests and people wanted to say, okay, people are making an investment in this area, they're willing to do this here, uh, we're willing to come into the area. So we wanted to maximize that space is what I'm trying to say in the, in the home and okay, in the, in the right. design of that. But just, I'm, I'm kind of getting this, a clear picture here. I'm sorry it's taking me so long, but your, okay. your house actually faces Blanding Street. Our house faces Wayne and Blanding Street. In fact, we have two addresses. So your driveway um, is on Blanding Street. Is on Blanding Street. Right. And so the driveway on we Wayne Street. We have two driveways, Street, I'm sorry. We have two driveways. Right. All right. So you have a driveway on, on Wayne Street, too. So that's. Right. And that's where the easement. Right. The easement is, is for the parking. Uh, so a car can actually, the easement kind of covers the parking, so it's wider there. A car can park there, but as far as ingress and egress, you know, we have, you have to get, be able to get to the fence. So when he was talking about the stepping in, that's where you step in to actually go, in into, the, go into the fence in the back. So you can, you can pull your trash can out, walk into the fence, but you come down, the easement gets a little wider there because you can park, and I think it's like 15 by 18 or something like that. I didn't bring all the measurements because once again, I didn't realize it was, it was contested and I would have to uh, defend to that extent. But that's basically what it is. You have a parking easement so you can actually pull, the, the neighbor can pull a car into the drive, but then you also have a, a kind of a walking easement to get in and out of the backyard. I so it, do, it does this. It looks like that's the only access um, to Wayne Street is via that easement. That's the only access to that, to that house? Well, they have a front door right there. Um, that right. It, right. They have a front door and then they have a backyard, which makes the easement necessary. But once again, we're, out, we're completely outside of the easement. The easement doesn't extend past that gate at all. We're not touching that. And the rest of, you know, the, rest of the neighborhood, uh, I mean, we're just, I love the neighborhood. Well, we, we don't have any plans to go anywhere. Um, most of the neighborhood really has, I think I inaccurately said earlier, there's an existing, existing variance that technically is incorrect, but there is an existing, <laughs> there's an existing variance or encroachment because the, the whole area kind of has those exceptions to it. If you look at all the houses we have, it's just an old neighborhood with. All right, bear with me if you will. Um, describe the ways in which the application of the requirement of the zoning ordinance effectively prohibit unreasonably restrict or your utilization of the subject property? All because of this, the safety of that drop off there, um, we wanted to stay away from, uh, there is a five foot drop off in that backyard, um, like the courtyard area. You cannot see it from there, but we had to dig out structurally to go in there. Um, there is a five foot, there's a five foot fall all around there. Um, is that, would that be, on the back of your house? Right, if you facing pull that the, picture up again, look, the, look right uh, after that gazebo. Okay, right there. Um, you can't, I know what it is, so I can, you, you can't distinguish it there, but there is an air conditioning, heating and air conditioning unit right in that corner, which is what you're seeing, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, right there and in front of the gazebo is where that drop off starts. You, you can't, you're not going to be able to pick it out. You're right. Okay. So between, so let, between the gazebo and that area, it's roughly eight feet. From the gazebo to the right. Roughly, yeah. To which is where that, which is where, so if this is, this is the yard. The gazebo is right here. You have about eight feet and then right there. And that goes all the way to the, to the uh, property line on the front and all the way back to the corner of the house. 
Well, let, let me ask you real quick while we're on that note. Looking at this photo, so the um, the accessory setback would be three feet, correct? So if you were to try to build this gazebo and conform to the zoning code and regulations, you would have to be three feet towards your dwelling. So. Why, I'm just asking, why can't you do that? So, I mean, I guess what I could do, uh, what, the only thing that I would have to do, I, according to my understanding, and this would be onerous at this point because, they, because that is set in concrete, which is the issue. Um, I could just, I could basically just cut those posts mm -hmm. and move the post up a few feet, and I would be within, I would be within the zoning. Right. The issue is, of course, when we set those posts and you pour concrete, you pour them in yeah. the, pour them in the ground, and then that, that to me that that has a, um, the structural element of that would be. The, the thing is, when we're, when we're asking to describe the extraordinary and exceptional conditions, you know, regarding the yard topography, et cetera, I don't see that because I understand why you didn't, why you don't want to move it, it's already done, but that was, you know, before receiving the required permit. And so simply the fact that it's existing now, I don't think that creates unnecessary hardship for you. Okay. Um, that, that's the thing, you know, in my opinion. Well, when we when we constructed the when we constructed that, mm -hmm. um, and I guess this goes to understanding to some extent. We, I'll accept. I have to accept responsibility for building the gazebo because I built the gazebo. Um, <laughs> but we hadn't had any we hadn't had any issue or have any of this come up because when we were we were kind of recruited to to invest in this neighborhood. And when we did that, we, were, we didn't have many limitations on, on that. I mean, we were, we were asked to, we, we came in and encouraged to do a lot there to spur, the and, and that's what we did. Perfectly so, understandable. I mean, I see how yeah. you got where you got. No problem there. I just, I, when, we're, when, we're, when we're asked to grant a variance and we run through the specific criteria, I, I, got you. I just have a hard time <laughs> seeing that that meets the threshold because okay. it's there. That's, that's what I mean by that, but I mean, understand how you got there. Okay. You're looking at number three, James. I, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Mr. Howard, but I think you answered number three by the, the five-foot drop-off. You had to move it over so that there is space. It's a safety issue, so there's space near that. Yeah, I think what Mr. Jenkins is saying is technically I could move those posts. Um, I would <laughs> really want I, I, you could move those posts in and still have a, a usable structure. I think when you get too small and that is really not usable, you want a gazebo to be a certain size, um, and that's really a standard size gazebo, ten by twelve, is what it is. Um, so to, to cut that down, and it would actually make the gazebo a lot less functional. But you know, I'm not. I didn't really didn't come prepared to uh, to contest. I, I didn't realize there was aside from the zoning yeah. letter. I didn't realize we really had an issue. So. Okay. Uh, number four is describe the way in which granting the variance will not be a substantial detriment to the adjacent property or to the public good. Additionally, in what ways will the granting of the variance not harm the character of the district? Right. Well, I think that one's pretty obvious. Um, the variance doesn't touch the, the, the easement to the existing property. Um, the structure is, is already our property. I already own the, the uh, property, so maintaining that is... Uh, is our responsibility. We don't touch the easement, we protected the easement. Um, so it just has, it has no effect on it. If we are allowed to continue to uh, complete the, the gazebo, of course it would be very attractive. The only thing that makes it, it's a gazebo now. I mean, the only thing that makes it somewhat uh, appear unsightly is we have a temporary tarp on the top, which I have not been able to remove. We left uh, to go to Italy for a month for something that we had to do. And I have not been able to touch it since then because of the letter from zoning. That's the only reason that is in that state. Mm -hmm. And I want to clarify too, just along those lines, um, depending on if this case is approved or not, when a permit is applied for, there will be a level of design review as well as it is in the city center design development area. So they would 
planning would be looking at the actual design of the structures as well. And I'll be happy to, do, um, to go through uh, that. Rachel, I've got a question for you. So um, does the concrete slab, is that, is that affected by the setback or just the gazebo? Just the actual structure. All right. So essentially that slab can stay just where it is. It doesn't have to be ripped up. It could be extended three feet, and the gazebo could be moved over three feet closer to the, his house, and that would that would satisfy the, the zoning ordinance. Pavement, concrete, that that can go up to the property line for mm -hmm. driveway, for example. It's the actual structure that those three feet from the property line, five feet from the main structure, those setbacks come to play. Understood. Okay. May I add one more thing? When we did that, we I didn't think we had any problem with the pad at all. Um, the, oh, I think the, the openness of it is probably what <laughs> confused me because it's a completely open structure. Um, I, I contemplated before, and this might be outside of the purview of this, but I contemplated before doing a hanging garden back there against that wall because I've actually had a garden, um, a garden in that area. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to do a hanging garden, I would have gone right up against that wall and had things coming down. It, it, it's just never been an issue. And because it's open, I, I didn't realize the post would even cause it. It's just <laughs> kind of odd. I have no more to add. I'd be happy to answer any other questions, but I hope that we can continue with this. It'll be a very beautiful and usable structure and continue to enhance the neighborhood as we've done for the past. The other, years. the other, um, the fifth, the fifth, um, uh, Item for the, uh, that we consider is is it the, is it the minimum necessary? I think we've had that discussion. Do you want to add anything to that? Is it the minimum necessary? I, I'm confused on that. Yes, is this the minimum necessary? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The meet. structure itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's the it's the minimum size um, necessary for. It. I mean, ten by twelve is generally what they are. I think what they mean by that is, does it have to be where it is, or could it be? It kind of you know, has to be where it is, unless put off of where it could be. It, it kind of, for the way I, the way I feel um, from a safety standpoint is the further we can stay back from a five foot drop off in that backyard. Um, now my son is 15 years old; he will jump down off of the wall into that yard. But I'm 48 now, and I'm not. I, I don't want to have to jump into that backyard. So I want to stay away from it and, and be able to have the flow of the, the, the flow of traffic back there when we have when we entertain to stay away from that drop off. So it doesn't look like there's anywhere else you could put it because if you move I'm looking at this if you move that way you're moving into the easement. If you move that way if you move right. close to the road, you'd be looking at from We can't come we can't come forward. Um, I've never wanted to do anything to, to uh, stop the, to interfere with the easement. I mean, I'm an attorney as well, so I understand not violating the easement. Um, we've done everything to try and enhance the, pro enhance the property and protect that easement. Um, I've, I've even contemplated building another um, parking pad for that area just because it's my responsibility to do so. They can't come in and construct anything there. Um, but I would like to do it just to enhance the look of the property. Um, I've, I've done everything that I can to um, to protect that. Very well. Uh, the last one is explain how your proposal um, is in harmony with the purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance and will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. So my understanding of of the zoning ordinance and ordinances in general is to protect one one you want to keep a minimum distance between properties, and I think the functional uh, reason for the zoning requirement is to allow, especially in a city setting, to allow movement in and around property lines. You never know when the city or some other uh, entity may have to come in and maintain. And so you maintain a setback from property lines to allow that sort of movement between that property so that whatever needs to be done can be done. This structure has no impact on that whatsoever. Um, if the city needs to come in and move around the property lines, even though that house sits on our property line, this structure will not inhibit the city at all from being able to come in and move between 
the property lines for surveys or whatever it needs to do. Very well. Well, I think that both uh, the, of the uh, uh, presentations have been made very well. Um, is there any, any uh, discussion um, from the board? This is the type situation where if the um, adjoining property owner didn't have any problem with the structure, I wouldn't have any problem with it whatsoever. So um, I agree with everything. Uh, that Mr. Howard has said, and I understand how he got where he is, but I also, I, you know, I, I have a hard time running through the criteria, seeing the necessary hardship to put this gazebo here. I kind of am in the camp that you could move this thing, at least the um, covered portion of it, three foot towards the existing house and have your gazebo. So it's, I guess bottom line is I wish, or, or, or I would like to see the neighboring owner would be okay with it, but if they're not, then I have a hard time justifying that it meets all the criteria. I think that's well said. Um, I think that the, the, the most, the, the biggest hardship is caused because it was constructed without a permit and now it's got to be moved in order to conform as opposed to had it been planned out before, I think it could have easily been constructed to conform to the zoning ordinance. Okay. Any further discussion? Be glad to entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we deny the variance to the side yard requirement for the accessory. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Opposed. We got two nays. And three, uh, four. Is that right? <laughs> Marcellus, what you I'm in opposite. I I uh, I didn't deny it. I, okay. I want to approve it. So we have three in favor of the of the motion and two against the motion. Is that correct? So then the motion carries. Sake, it, I just want to double check. Yeah, I know. I don't understand. <laughs> All right. So the motion was to deny. Jenna voted. Jenna Stevens voted nay. Marcellus Primus to voted deny. To, de to deny. So you voted aye. 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 I vote aye. And Reggie McKnight. I voted nay. I voted to deny. You voted against. Against. Yeah. Now. Okay. Motion. The next item on the regular agenda is number 14, case 2018-0114. It's for 746 and 748 Hardin Street. It's a variance to off-street parking requirement for a mixed-use building. And just to provide some background on this one, a variance was approved, um, I believe, in 2002, where it approved for the mixed-use building that they would have the existing six spaces on site. So this is a follow-up variance to that approval. So if the applicant's here, he is welcome to come forward. Oh, good morning, everyone. I'm Joseph Azar, upstairs audio and video. I'm the one applying for this. I do have some other things. May I pass out to the group? Um, first of all is a letter from oh. Chief Melron Kelly, or Assistant Chief, I should say, uh, who has said that they take no position on this, meaning they're neither for nor against. 
The second one is my neighbor, uh, Brad Weber at Supercuts, and he is in support of this. He has run into the same problems I have, and he is tired of the, the mess that is there. Oh, excuse me. And we, he finds a lot of the same things in front of his door that I find in mine. And actually, I have um, some pictures here uh, that you may want to look at or you may not want to look at of how people use our front door. And finally, completely off the record, has nothing to do with this, but I'd love to invite you to a concert Friday night at which I'm playing. It's a free concert, and uh, we'd love to have you come. So Columbia Community Concert Band. We have about 75 pieces in that. We have the, we have the busiest corner in Five Points. It is um, where Uber and Lyft come, uh, taxis right there. All four of those corners are very busy. Mine and the fountain, those are the two. We're right in the center of the bar scene of Five Points. Everybody congregates there, especially about 1.30 in the morning when the bars start letting out and people start coming out. And they're there to get a ride, friends come pick them up, whatever. We run into a lot of pee, puke, and poop. I hate to say it, but um, I've had people up, going up my stairs to my front door and urinating on my front door. That is no fun to have to clean up. It stinks. I have seen them up there. In fact, one guy I knew very well, and he was in the back of the paddy wagon. The cops got him for doing that. Um, uh, Mr. Ozark, can we go to the criteria um, yes, sir. It's kind of stick, stick on that. Let me, I don't know that you actually followed it, but um, the first one is, you know, to describe, please, the extraordinary conditions, uh, excuse me, the extraordinary exceptional conditions, such as the size, shape, topography, so that pertain to your property for this request, which is, um, the request looks like it is for a, um, Variance for operating hours for a temporary vendor. Um, That's the second request. This first one is for the parking. Okay, so this is the parking variance request. So there's two, these are two? This is a, a double request or is this something else? They're, yes, they're back-to-back -back requests, but for the second one to be heard, the first one has to be heard and approved. So we've got um, to operate. Applicable. Uh, yeah, this one is the parking variance requesting just zero parking spaces on site from 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. It's just a variance for a certain period of time after regular business hours. Okay, can we stick to that one? Yes, sir. All right, on the first part then. And then um, uh, kind of go in there. So so this is, this is a parking variance for specific hours of the evening. Yes, sir. All right. Would you like me to comment on that? Uh, yeah. Do you want me to read you again the um, so? Um, please describe the extraordinary exceptional conditions, um, such as the size, shape, topography of the property, et cetera, that pertain um, to this request. I'm not sure I understand that exactly. The problem we have there is that people come and park in that lot and they go all over five points. We don't know who's in the lot, what. Um, my store closes at six o'clock. Grill teriyaki is open on Thursday night till 10. On Friday and Saturday night, they close the doors to the store about 10 or 11 o'clock, but they have a to-go window, and they sell out of that. And the problem with leaving the store open at Grill teriyaki is too many people, a lot of problems inside, and that's why they run the window. Again, the lot's full. We don't know who the people are. If we, I'm not there all the time. Sometimes I work late at night. Grill teriyaki, if they tow somebody off, somebody drunk comes back, really ticked off about it, could start a fight. They come back, knock the windows out, do some damage. 
So, you know, they don't know who's there and what. They don't get to use the parking lot. I don't really get to use the parking lot. It's not of use to us because people are coming through. We also have motorcycles that spill out into the street, over the sidewalks, and all. We have a lot of hip-hop cars, I should say, with loud sound systems and flashing neon lights that will sometimes park there. It attracts a crowd, and it attracts too much, and it causes problems, sometimes some violence, um, which we're trying to reduce. If so, so what are your, what's your proposal to... The proposal you, is to be able to control that lot, to block it off. I believe you have the pictures that uh, show the police blocking it off. If you could pull that up, please. The police actually have either come in and put barricades over there uh, some nights or they have parked their cars in three of them side by side or at an angle across it. They blocked us off, they blocked trips off. It has reduced a lot of the problems by doing that. Still, they also put cones on my stairs to keep people from going up, though some of the kids have thrown the cones down the street and still go up. And, sit on the stairs and litter my, my stairs with rice and dressing and all the mess that I have to clean up uh, when we come in on Thursday, Friday morning, Saturday morning, that sort of thing. So we're asking you to allow us to control that lot on Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, and if there's a special event to something that's going to bring masses of people to Five Points, to be able to block the lot off so that we can control it and keep people out from all the mess that we have. And the police, again, like I said, they like the idea. They're the ones who blocked it off, in fact, and brought the police barricades down. So, and I apologize that those pictures actually did not make it into the packet, so, but he did provide a picture showing the barricade. I think I do have some on my cell phone if you'd like to see those. I still have those. No, I can get the picture. It's, not, it's pretty easy. So your business is closed. Mine is closed. But uh, this is required for the uh, restaurant? Uh, question for Rachel. It applies to both businesses on that parcel. So There's the four. grilled teriyaki and upstairs audio share a parcel. So in the variance from 2002 was six spaces to be shared by both businesses. And so that was the existing variance in place. Um, and so right now what we're talking about is a request of variance um, to um, uh, basically eliminate those spaces between the hours of 6 and 3 a.m. or something like that. Is that yes. right? Um, and, okay, so I'm finally starting to catch on. I apologize for being so slow. So um, uh, let's, let's get back to that. I think the extraordinary exceptional conditions that you're describing, as you were saying, was that basically it's um, those places become a loitering um, uh, place for, for, for parkers that are not using those businesses, um, even though they're supposed to be private parking for those businesses and controlled by the businesses, you're asking to be able to block, barricade them off. Is that correct? That's After correct. hours. That is correct. If we don't, I mean, the police have been, you know, at their will. And uh, we still don't get to use it. So it's. And I think you were getting at they don't generally apply to other structures in the vicinity because y'all are at a, the, the corner of Hardin and Green, um, which is a, is a large congregation area for outside um, uh, partiers uh, in the Five Points area. Quite a bit. That's where uh, I hate to say it, uh, most of the violence has been. Um, I hate to say about the shootings and such, but most of them happened right there. So then, um, you know, uh, as far as uh, demonstrating ways in which this uh, variance will not be substantial detriment to the adjacent property or additionally other ways granting the variance will not harm the character of the district. Um, is this a joint application that's being made between you and the restaurant or is this just an application being made by you and the restaurant is? I, I, okay. I'm the landlord. So you're the landlord for the restaurant. Yes, sir. Gotcha. So essentially you're saying that this is not going to be um, detrimental um, and it's basically there to um, uh, 
stop uh, loitering in um, property damage after hours. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Um, and then uh, explain how this request is the minimum necessary. The minimum necessary? I could... think that you're saying that you would only want to do this between a certain hour of the 24-hour day when you're not, business is not open, um, and it's so it's not a, you're not eliminating these parking spaces uh, yes. during normal business hours. No, we don't want to affect the daytime business. It's just that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights are big nights for college students. I mean, Thursday night's kind of the... And that is, and just to take that a little further, so this request is limited to Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights? Yes, we'd also like to ask if it's a special event in Five Points. Let's say there's some big event that happens. Let's say there's, it's a Tuesday football game, mm -hmm. heaven forbid, but if something like that, then they're all going to pile into Five Points after the game. We want to be able to control that. If we don't, I'm sure the police will come in and lock it off anyhow, you know, if it's something like that, you know. Okay. There are different events. We just want to make sure that we can keep it clean, keep the traffic down, the problems down. That's what we want to do. Right. And then, you know, finally, uh, explain how um, your proposal is in harmony with the purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance that will not be detrimental to the neighborhood or otherwise to public welfare. I can't see it being detrimental to any of the other businesses actually beneficial. If you see that note from my neighbor, uh, he has the same problems with the type of things. He's had his door busted in because people are hanging in on the street and all. So actually we feel it's beneficial to help in that sense. We're not taking anything away in essence because again, grill teriyaki doesn't have use of it at night when the cars park or whatever, or the motorcycles are there, which the police do not want those motorcycles hanging over there. They not only fill our lot, they come over the sidewalk, and they're in that area, if you can see it, that little piece where it goes down into the street, they're out in that area too. So it's causing people to have to walk around and out in the street sometimes. And actually the former landlord, I mean former um, owner of Grill Teriyaki, had a problem with that. She was saying that the people in the cars and the motorcycles were harassing, especially the girls that walked by, you know, talking smack to them, that sort of thing, bothering the people there. And they did not like it at all. I read that um, you would leave one or two spots for grilled teriyaki to do takeout to allow spot cars to... Well, I guess that's in the second part of this. I was going to address that in the next issue. I guess what I'm getting at is what, how will this look? How will you physically barricade the well, spots and will you put sign up for the, to leave if you open? Or? Is it okay to address the second part of this too? Okay. The second part of this, and, and may I, if, if I may, with your permission, address the second issue on this, which ties into this. Having a person there with a cart that's selling allows us to have someone who has eyes on the place. Part of my agreement with them is that they will clean the place up at night after they leave so we don't have that mess that you see. So they will watch people, keep them from going up the stairs and onto the roof, keep the cars out that are coming in. And to answer your question, right against grill teriyaki, having one or two spaces that are marked maybe with some standing signs that say are their pickup. Because right now the uh, Uber Eats people, the Bite Squad, and all the others that come in to pick up at night, they pull up out in the street either in that ramp down part or farther out they pull up into the turn lane. So they're parked there and they're sitting there and they're waiting for the orders to come out from Grill Teriyaki so they can take and deliver them. So actually they're blocking the street up. The cart vendor would be required to watch that and keep people out as well. That's part of the job, that's part of my requirement. If they do not do that, they do not get to be in the lot. So the cart vendor is an essential part of this to make sure it's kept clean, kept neat, keep the people out, keep them from going behind the dumpster and using my dumpster as a public bathroom, which uh, I wouldn't believe what we find back there, I hate to tell you. 
uh, keeping it clean and watching if there's a problem, calling the police, letting them know there's something coming down. They think there's some, you know, we, I see, I'm down there sometimes at two o'clock at night and I see people, you know, pushing each other, talking smack, or they get ready to have some violence. I've stepped in the middle of it sometimes and tried to break it up and I've called the cops over. You know, they usually sit across the street where the trucks park. Uh, you can't quite see it right there on Saluda, that little place that goes through by the fountain. And I'll holler over for them or wave to them and they'll come over. And that's what the cart guy is, or whoever runs the cart is supposed to do as well. So we keep that down because again, most of the violence that has happened late at night, and it usually happens between 1.30 and 2.30, when everybody's getting out and everybody's being pushed against each other, that's what we want to keep down. We want to keep Five Points clean and happy place. All right, so the item before us at this moment is uh, to allow you um, to uh, basically fence off or cordon off or block off the six parking places in front of your property uh, from public use between the hours of 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. on um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Is that the way I'm reading this? Um, for the variance, it's from 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. Gotcha. So, and just to give some clarification of how the two tie in, because we'll hear the second variance after this one if approved. Um, for a temporary vendor to go on the site, a temporary vendor cannot take up a required parking space. And so since he is required to have six spaces on site, the variance request is in place to allow him to be able to even have a vendor on site. Okay. I will tell you the reason for 6 a.m. is, I mean 6 p.m. is because that's when we close upstairs audio. And that's when people start coming down to go to restaurants, bars and such. And actually the police have come down when they did bring the barricades and they say, can we start setting them up now to keep that out? I mean, otherwise I would have said probably eight or nine, but they're the ones who actually started early and I'm following their lead on this. Okay. Since we have to take these one at a time, let's just have, um, see if there's anyone else in the room that's here to speak uh, in favor or against this application. Would you please come forward. Hello, uh, I'm Amy Beth Franks. I'm the executive director of the Five Points Association. Uh, we are a nonprofit governing body that looks out for the best interests of the neighbors, of the merchants. Uh, Mr. Azar has been a longtime um, and good standing property owner and business owner in Five Points. And I am not here to speak out against or for necessarily, but rather voice some concerns that my board has for you to consider in making your ruling. I hate to hear the problems that Mr. Azar is having, and I believe him. Uh, what he said about people gathering and loitering at night is, is absolutely happening in what I've experienced. I do have concerns that what he's proposing might not necessarily eradicate what's happening that he's opposed to. Um, if there's any way that we could consider looking at some sort of conditional approval so we could allow him the opportunity to close it and have a food vendor and maybe reevaluate after some time. We do have some other private property vendors that have vendors in their parking lots. And I don't want to call them out while they're not here to defend themselves, but um, some of the concerns we have with those property vendors or property owners is that those vendors are not completely breaking down when they're done. So obviously we would want to make sure that there was absolutely nothing left in terms of tent or mats and setup. I also worry about um, these vendors not cleaning up after themselves. And I would hate to see a vendor brought in that competes with one of the brick and mortar businesses. Um, you know, we're here to support all of the businesses. There's 150 approximately in five points. And while I very much want to fix what's happening to Mr. Azar's property and make sure that his business is not hurt by what's happening in, at nighttime, I want to make sure that we're going about it in a, the right way to eradicate his problems but not hinder any of the other businesses. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, and to clarify for the record, any temporary vendor would have to get a permit. Um, there are some issues in the Five Points area of ones that come in after 6 
city hours that we are not entirely aware of, so we have been looking at a few of those, but a condition of a temporary vendor permit is they are supposed to break down entirely when they are not in operation. So that is something that we could enforce from a zoning perspective outright just from the permit. Got it. Glad you clarified that. Anyone else? Uh, Joe, you cannot speak from the thing. If you want to say one more thing, then come up to the podium and spark the microphone. Thank you. Oh, I agree with Amy Beth Franks. Um, <clears throat> when I built the building, I, mean, I put a lot of money and time into it to make sure it fit five points. In fact, if you go around behind to the post office, you'll notice instead of concrete block, it's brick. At that time, it cost me another five or ten thousand dollars to do that, but I wanted it to look good. I'm not going to do anything there to hurt my property or to hurt five points. Any vendor that's going to be there is going to have to clean up. They're going to have to hose down if there's what you see in those pictures. They're going to have to shovel if there's human fertilizer, I should say, or hose down, whatever. And believe me, I found it in my parking lot. Uh, I've seen people squatting in my parking lot doing their business. I have no problem with um, you know, trying it out. What I want to do and my neighbor is we want to reduce the problems. We know there's no cure for alcohol and hormones. You can't fight youth, unfortunately. All you can do is try to reduce the problems, and this is the whole idea. I have, uh, you know, it's just come to a head that we can't take it anymore when we find this on our stairs and all, and all the problems, and even the police who have now decided that they want to barricade it because, and. We've allowed them to, to, to do that, but still with the barricades, we do find problems. So having the cart vendor there that is responsible, a responsible one, that has to live up to the requirements that I set uh, will help reduce that and keep an eye on the problems there. So again- Qu Question for you. How do you intend to barricade off the uh, block off the parking? We can either use, uh, more of the police barricades. Again, you asked the question about the, um, you know, the two spaces, a space or two for pickup, you know, getting some sort of signs there. And if people come in to park and walk off, the vendor would either call the tow company, first hopefully tell them not to, but we'll have signs there. And right out, not in the back, but in the front. So if that's the back of the parking space right here before you pull in, You'll see that sign. So that will be for pickup for grilled teriyaki. We want that. And we do that or uh, allow the uh, employees of grilled teriyaki to actually park there. So we block it off, let them come in so the cooks and whatever can be there in the parking lot at night, that sort of thing. Because they don't have any place to park either. They so essentially, you want to block it off so that you can control who has access to it. Yes, sir. We really want to do that, you know in one way or another. But as it stands now, it's used by everybody else but us. They park there and they go everywhere. Okay. And I, I do check that. I feel the hoods of the cars to see if they're warm or not. They're pretty stone cold. <laughs> so we want to try to help make Five Points a better place and keep it clean and keep it safe. I mean, I'm a long time Thank merchant you. down there. Thank you for your Thank testimony. You very much. Is there any discussion with the board? Or any questions from the board? Well, so are we taking, we've got two separate issues here. We've sort of blended them together. Obviously, we're going to take two votes, but I mean, this is it as far as presentation regarding this matter. And we've. We didn't fully go into the second one. Um, so <coughs> this motion will just be for the parking. So if you all wanted to discuss the second one now, it might be better to just go ahead and close out the first okay. case, and then we'll hear the second one, which is the operation, okay. the operating hours. So that makes sense. I mean, yeah. Procedurally, that's certainly the way we need to do it. But so addressing the first one only, and I realize we've sort of bled into the second issue, 
This, this to me seems to be a, a, a no-brainer. Um, you know, we've got an opportunity here to improve the safety in five points. You've demonstrated um, very thoroughly to us the reasons for the problems and your concerns. Um, so, you know, we're, we're being asked to grant a variance to all street parking requirements for this mixed-use building as evidence that the um, spaces are not needed is this, the simple fact that you're, you're having this problem. You know, if you needed these spaces or were using these spaces, I feel like you wouldn't be having these issues. So, to me, this is, this is an opportunity to improve the safety in a um, you know, in an area of five points that's seen a tremendous amount of violence in the past few years, and I think it's um, absolutely appropriate that we approve this uh, variance for you. The building's not open; you don't need these spaces, and this will help clean up the area. So fully in support of this. Thank you. Okay. Um, for clarity, um, you're okay with us granting this variance um, between the hours of 6 p.m. and 3 a.m. Thursday night through Saturday morning, Sunday morning. Yes, sir. Um, I would like to uh, uh, make a, a motion um, that we uh, approve uh, uh, the variance um, for the uh, operating, I mean, for the, uh, the parking um, uh, request um, between the hours of 6 p.m. and 3 a.m. Um, on the start beginning on Thursday at 6 p.m. and ending on Sunday morning at 3 a.m. Um, subject to um, any comments in this application uh, or, or uh, suggestions by the board, I mean by the uh, um, zoning administrator. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Um, so now we come to the second um, case, which is uh, the uh, temporary vendor. Yes, case um, 2018-0115. It's a variance to the operating hours of a temporary vendor. Um, we covered some of it during discussion of the last case, but within 400 feet of a residentially zoned area, um, the operating hours are limited to 9 p.m. Um, they cannot operate from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m., to clarify. Um, this parcel does, from lot line to lot line, come within 400 feet of a residentially zoned area. So, and it doesn't matter if there's a house on, it goes by zoning district, not by what is actually on the parcel. So. The, the variance then basically is operating until 3 a.m. as opposed to um, closing at 9 p.m. Yes, it is to allow a temporary vendor, once permitted, to be on the parcel past 9 p.m. So, in the same, the other conditions of a temporary vendor apply, such as they must break down and clean up when not in operation. Understood. So, um, I think you've thoroughly explained why you want this, this these hours is because those are the hours that you want someone there um, to be looking after your property and making sure that it's not being um, uh, um, trespassed on um, after hours. Yes. And if you wouldn't mind, uh, could you pull up the map that shows where the residential areas are?
This is the subject property here at the intersection of Green and Hardin. The residential zoning begins at this line with the yellow. Which is a city park. Which is along yeah. the Green and Sandy. So, but it is residentially zoned, RG1. So, and it's from zoning district. If I may point out, we're not the, we would not be the only vendor. If you look in the middle of the block, um, where it was the Chinese restaurant at one time, he grills up chicken and such at night as well. So he's just as close to it. And then over on the corner where Lucky's Bar and Grill is, which is where the Magic Mart is too, there's a vendor there. And... Um, they're close to that as well. And actually, there is a residential area down on um, Santee, some houses there, so they're actually close to that. And I do know that the old Harper's Building, which serves alcohol, is close to the church over there as well. Which uh, So we would not be the only ones that would be so close to that residential area, which is actually a public park, as you mentioned. And I don't believe we would be hurting anybody at all by having a vendor in our lot. I can't see that somebody doing hot dogs, hamburgers, or barbecue or something would bother the park at all late at night. After all, yeah. there's... Yeah, I think for the sake of time, I think that we have uh, our discussions on this have, cur have, have thoroughly vetted out the, uh, the, the different uh, criteria that are required and why you need those and why this is a special um, um, situation uh, with your property and its location and the hours of, um, of uh, operation of the general public in and around your area. And so I don't think we need to go through that again. Um, I would like uh, to make a motion that we uh, approve this request subject to the limitations of uh, 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. Uh, from Thursdays through uh, at 6 p.m. beginning at Thursdays at 6 p.m. and ending on Sundays at 3 a.m. Um, and that um, I don't believe that I believe that the, the, the city permit for a vendor will, will continue to apply to this. So I don't think we need to put any additional restrictions on that. And just um, for procedure's sake, um, I just wanted to make sure there was no one that wanted to come up and speak as to this specific case before the motion is approved or denied. Yeah, so I'll table that motion and ask that anybody in the audience would like to come back up and speak um, uh, about the second request. Um, please raise your hand. <coughs> I see none. Okay, yep. thanks. Um, all right, so um, uh, going back to my motion, uh, um, uh, I would only add that um, it be um, subject to any criteria stated in the application um, uh, recommended by staff. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and love to have you come to our concert. There's some invitations there. Thanks. Thank you. It's Friday night. All right, the final case on the agenda is item number 16. It's case 2018-0117. It's for 2013 Green Street. This is a variance to the off-street parking requirement for a restaurant. So, and to give background on this one as well, a variance was granted in 2016 when the restaurant was expanded. Um, this allowed for the restaurant to maintain just the existing 18 parking spaces that are on site. This request is to eliminate those 18 parking spaces so that they can expand to fill the parcel. I believe the applicant's here. They can come forward. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I think it's appropriate following Mr. Azar and, and the challenges that uh, his business faces and uh, things that we're trying to do in Five Points to support the efforts of, of Amy Beth and the Five Points Association um, in rebranding uh, Five Points in a manner of speaking to be more family friendly 
uh, less bar focused. Um, so uh, our request has to do with that and those efforts in doing that. Uh, before we came before the board here, or the council, um, we did get with uh, Amy Beth uh, and the Five Points Association and informed them of our intent and they uh, supported our efforts and we appreciate them on that very much. Uh, so first, if I can go through a couple of points here for you and, and, and then be happy to answer your questions. Uh, the reasons for the request is based on four primary areas that we have dealt with and observed over the last three years of being in business in five points. <clears throat> Changing habits of consumers in driving, safety, economics, and of course the efforts of the Five Points Association are the, are the primary points that I'd like to go over. Uh, in our three years of, ex of existence, we have supported the efforts of the Five Points Association in the City of Columbia to rebrand Five Points as less of a late night only district into a family friendly, 30 plus friendly, safe entertainment district. We have had to deal with the well written uh, report in the state, the expose on uh, the articles about Five Points and the challenges that Five Points faces. Um, and we have tried to be, uh, I don't want to say on the tip of the spear, but towards the tip in helping uh, get away from that bar focus. Uh, we have continued to offer fresh, made from scratch food at a very fair and reasonable price. We close earlier at night than our neighbors so as not to attract or encourage late night drinking. We have had no issues with underage drinking or any issues that would be considered unsafe, safe or unethical. In short, we have supported the mission to alter the perception of the Five Points District. Uh, so, uh, going through these four points for you. Number one, uh, again, I'd like to state that we are grateful for the support of the Five Points Association, and specifically Amy Beth, Beth Franks. Um, they have re uh, uh, provided in this request an understanding uh, and the, of the importance of this request and how helpful it is in their efforts to broaden Five Points appeal. Uh, point number two, in the last three years it has become increasingly, increasingly obvious that consumers have altered their habits when it comes to transportation. The proliferation of services such as Uber and Lyft uh, have shown that many more people choose not to drive personal vehicles when going out socially for both um, Safety and e economical reasons. People choose to not drink alcohol and drive, which is a very positive thing for everyone. We have seen a tremendous increase in the amount of people using the services of Uber and Lyft. Also, we were very happy to see the addition of the bike rentals in Five Points. The availability of these bikes encouraged their use. We support that. We have added a bike ra rack actually in the back and it has been uh, greatly appreciated and used regularly. Also the amount of people of all ages that insist on walking their dogs and bringing them with them to eat has increased dramatically. Being pet friendly nowadays is a requirement not an option. Uh, we have also seen a dramatic increase in the use of personal motorized scooters to get around. These trends by consumers and their needs have changed dramatically. Younger people have shown uh, a preference to not own vehicles. Uh, next, uh, following up on that uh, point, uh, uh, the issue of safety. As recent events involving the Ford Motor Company and General Motors shows uh, with the closing of plants, eliminating the production of many cars and focusing on trucks and SUVs, it has become an increasing issue for our location to handle large vehicles safely. Our building is 70 plus years old. The alleyway along the side is very tight. The back parking lot is approximately 50 to 60 feet wide at its widest. There is nowhere to turn around if the lot is 50% full. <clears throat> Excuse me. The average uh, truck SUV nowadays is 20 to 25 feet long. Our parking lot is approximately 50 to 60 feet wide. This has led to vehicles hitting each other, scratching each other, etc. People have gotten back there with no need to turn, no way to turn around and have had to try to back out, which is very dangerous. In short, the simple truth is that the parking area for a 70 plus year old building is outdated and unable to safely accommodate today's larger vehicles, which has proven to be the preference. We upset more guests by having to maintain this outdated lot than we can accommodate successfully. Uh, the fourth point is more of an economics point. 
uh, to maintain the quality of food and the level of staffing, the prep work required to execute a made-from-scratch menu that is healthier and still flavorful requires a much higher level of labor cost than a bar focused on just serving drinks. To open from lunch through dinner requires more staff and more management to do it successfully and safely, more so than a bar that just opens at night to serve drinks. From a strictly economic perspective, it is much more profitable to be a bar than it is to be a restaurant. Also, due to Five Points' reputation as merely late night college zone and the fact that the lack of offices and daytime businesses is limited to students or locals, local business, uh, lunch business traffic is very limited. It is expensive to prepare fresh food every morning and then provide for a very limited lunch crowd. Without the ability to maximize traffic and seating during early evening and dinner, we would have to look at ways to cut labor, cut operating expenses, and limit our operating hours. Unfortunately, that we cannot. Unfortunately, that means laying people off. We have held steady for three years, but again, from an economic perspective, we cannot compete with bars and five points. From an economic perspective, we would like the city council to look at our request in a similar manner to when governments offer tax incentives for businesses to go into areas that the city state is trying to alter the economic conditions. The difference here is that this request, requested variance <clears throat> would not be a tax reduction. However, it would be a tax increase based on increased revenue production, along with not only not laying people off but hiring more people. We believe the city council's support in approving our request serves as a very similar purpose in five points as does tax incentives. In conclusion, we do not come to asking for this request without having three years of efforts on our part to work within the guidelines as they exist. I am reminded of an old phrase, if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you always got. We support both the Five Points Association and the City of Columbia's efforts to alter the perception of the Five Points District. We believe we have shown that support by not following the path of least resistance and coincidentally, the path of increased profitability by being an alcohol-focused business. We believe that if we are successful in getting approval on this matter, we can continue those efforts. We are sincerely appreciative of the tremendous support on this matter we have received from Amy Beth Franks and the Five Points Association Board. We are grateful our landlord, Dana Wolf of Wolf & Tales, supports our efforts 100%. We know that what we are trying to accomplish is what will make our current guests very happy and to help attract more people and their pets. We also know that the world is changing. The transportation, the environment, and not driving while drinking has all changed and will continue to change. I believe we can support and embrace these changes through how we operate. I hope these items show that we have spent three years observing and studying this effort. We do not come to this request lightly or without forethought. We hope you see the challenges and opportunities, and we do as we do and support our request. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, is there anyone else here to speak in favor or against this application? If you come to the podium, you may. And I'm Joseph Azar, upstairs on your video. I look at their building every day. When Garibaldi's closed down, we were so afraid. Here comes another late night bar and all the garbage, trash, and everything. Publico has done a great job. They have wonderful tacos and they have an excellent hamburger, I gotta tell you. Um, it's a great place, it's run well. Um, I have to agree with them, you know, traffic, you know, people are taking Uber and Lyft now. Um, so it, it, we don't need as much parking sometimes. I mean, they're coming out in front of my place, like I said, I see them all the time in Uber and Lyft. In a parking space that tight, like he's saying, what can you do? It does cause problems. In fact, I didn't even know he had the parking space for a long time back there. So I gotta say, I think they're a real asset to five points. I agree with them, and if the City of Columbia, is, which has bought the building, the state building on Divine Street, if they take that parking lot too and we use that for City or Five Points parking, his loss of a few spaces will be greatly offset by what the City does, and hopefully they will do that, and hopefully someday we'll get another parking lot for Five Points as well, which we could use, and then we'd be like the Vista where a lot of places don't have parking, but there is parking for people to come down. So I, I've got to say, 
Thank you to Publico for improving five points, and I hope you'll approve their request. Thank you. That, that was unrehearsed. Okay, there's someone else who would like to speak. Oh, Amy. Quickly, I won't eat up too much time. Again, Amy Beth with the Five Points Association. I just wanted to confirm um, our support of Publico's request. They've been a stellar member of our community and we're happy uh, that they're working hard to improve our image. Uh, we do ask that this approval um, not be conditional only to that brick and mortar building, no matter who occupies it. That should Publico expand and move out of their space and a new business come in, We'd like for them to have to make the request as well and not necessarily carry the same parking variance. Thank you. Um, just for a quick clarification, I believe that would be the case, right? Um, the variance runs with the property. We cannot make it specific to a specific property owner. However, um, it would have to be the same use coming in. It would not just be a blanket variance. It would have to be another restaurant coming in for the parking variance to apply but it does run with the property, not just with the property owner. Okay. Um, I would say that um, you've made a, a tremendous um, and very appreciate your, your uh, application. Um, I think you've addressed uh, very succinctly all of the, um, of the questions uh, asked uh, of you um, in your written application and also verbally in your testimony. And so we appreciate that. Um, I don't have any, uh, any further um, questions. Does anyone from the board have a, have a question? I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve this application uh, in a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Have a happy holiday. Thank you. No other business is on the agenda today. Happy holidays to everybody. See you next year. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Hereby adjourned. Thank you.